I mean, I hold history very sacred. Sacred. The way the farmer looks at the earth and he holds it sacred. The way a Christian takes the Bible and he holds it sacred. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, professional artist, master educator, attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. If you like this video, please give me a like, a share, a subscribe. Much appreciation to those that have already done so. Damn, damn, serious crap! As you know, because you clicked on the video, I'd like to have a little bit of a conversation about the mausoleum at Holocarnassus. And uh, this is a big one. It's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. We've talked about it before, but this one is dedicated to uh, Mausolus, I guess. <laughs> this construction originally began when the region was in the control of the Persian Empire. However, parts of it were also constructed during a time when the region was under the control of Alexander the Great. It was built in 353 in what is now modern-day Turkey. This mausoleum at Holocarnassus was created for King Mausolus, who ruled this region from 377 to 353 BC. And the project began the same year that he died. But the construction was carried out by his wife, who was also his sister, Artemisia. Essentially, this is an above-ground tomb. This rectangular tomb was 100 feet by 120 feet rectangular, had a circumference of 440 feet, would climb 140 feet tall, and there would be a series of platforms that led up to the top tomb that was roofed by a 24 step platform that went up to a sculpture of a chariot with four horses, and on the top in the chariot, was a statue of King Mausolus and his wife's sister Artemisia. At 148 feet tall, it was at that time one of the tallest structures on the planet. This was created out of white marble. There were many, many decorations around it, including lower leaf sculptures and sculptures in the round that were created by many of the best sculptors of the time, including Timotheus, Scopas, Leocares, and Bryaxis. 36 sculptures were included at the top of all of the family members. Now, we don't know who the actual individuals are, but these are believed to be Mausolus and Artemisia. However, it could have been any of their male and female relatives. The decorative reliefs around the mausoleum included one of the battle between the Athenians and the Amazons, and another that was a battle with the Senators. The earthquake would topple this thing in the 13th century AD, specifically in 1494. A couple hundred years later, the Crusaders would come in and use those stones to build the Castle of St. Peter. We can see the columns and the parts of the marble that were used right there in the side of this Castle of St. Peter. Originally, this castle was called Petronium. But another way to say Petronium is Bodrum. And the modern name of the city that once was Halicarnassus is now Bodrum. So they would rename the town to the name of the castle. So, there's that. Oh, uh, thank you for your approval. This sculpture would influence lots of things in the future, including the Mausoleum of Hadrian. But strangely, we don't know the Mausoleum of Hadrian as the Mausoleum of Hadrian. We know the Mausoleum of Hadrian as the Castel St. Angelo, which is a tomb fortress in the Vatican City. So yes, they turned the tomb into a castle fortress. Isn't it strange how that happens? I do love that story. Thanks for letting me share it with you. Have a good day.